Itoki is a typical student, but in the distance, he notices a ninja. A masked girl named Kasetsa follows him about, at his mother's request so she can make sure he doesn't procrastinate. We see a montage of Itoki being a complete chat at parkour as he takes a shortcut on the way back to his house. Even though Trok-kun is prepared to ice guy him, he chooses to perform a backflip in order to live. He appears to be delighted when he discovers a love letter in his locker the following day at school. A short while later, he runs into Tsubasa, the girl who wrote the love letter. Although she doesn't actually know him, she chooses to allow him inside her home since she finds him to be so awesome after seeing how he managed to evade Truck Kuen and avoid getting ice guyed. That evening, Itoki chooses to visit his new lover at her house. She takes a seat close to him before getting up and moving a little bit away. She throws away all of her clothing and walks over to Itoki. She tries to kiss him, but our hero of the anime fumbles the bag and refuses to kiss her. When he searches under the bed, he discovers Kosetsu, who is slicing Itoki's face. Tsubasa appears to be leading a group of enigmatic individuals wearing all-black attire. While battling the adversaries, she is able to assist Itoki in escaping. Reiha and Kaizo may be seen helping him escape from the residence outside. When the vehicle they are in is attacked, they order Itoki to flee for his life. Itoki keeps running until he is left on the street by himself. He then tries to ask a police officer for assistance, but the officer is killed, and Itoki is prepared to meet his end. Tokisada, his uncle, shows up and utilizes his abilities to fend them all off. Itoki becomes unconscious. When he awakens, he discovers himself in a dojo. She makes an appearance, and seems to be the IGA clan's matriarch. Itoki contests his ninja status, and the fact that his entire family is a clan of ninjas. Later, Tokusada informs him that his mother gave up everything to keep him safe and that his father was a ninja who perished. Itoki is advised to learn how to fight and stand his ground by Tokusada instead of choosing to live as a coward and flee. Itoki consents to the test. Itoki's mother informs him that there is a ninja academy where he can practice his skills and be much safer. His uncle is finally told the test's location on the day of the exam, and he drives the group there. When they get at the location of the exam, Tokusada informs him that because killing is against ninja protocol, he will probably be safe. Inquiring about the location of the ninja supper, he and Kasetsu enter the retail center. They are escorted together to a secret chamber once it is made clear that this is a secret code and after his companion insists on it. They notice that other pupils are waiting for them to begin the test. They find that the Kokuten Ninjutsu Academy transfer exam will consist of a hide-and-seek practice run. The ninjas will be divided into hiders and seekers, with the latter having to track out the former in the supermarket. You have 10 minutes to find them. The test will be passed by the seekers if they track down the hider. If they are unable to locate the hider, who will ultimately succeed in the test, they will lose. During the exam, Kasetsu is the seeker and quickly apprehends the hider since he tried to steal. When Itoki's turn comes, he is surprised to discover that the person he must look for is the girl from the night she attempted to kill him. To make matters worse, there are assassins out to kill him in the grocery shop. Fortunately, Tokisada is there, closely monitoring everyone. When an assassin takes a direct shot at Itoki, Kusetsu also stands by him. She delivers Itoki from certain death, and he starts to flee. Assassins quickly surround Kusetsu, but one of them is able to sneak into the service area alone and attempt to kill Itoki. Fortunately, Itoki uses the fire alarm to evacuate the area and prevent any injuries. He makes it more difficult for them to see by using the fire extinguisher and takes advantage of the smoke sirens. The water sprinklers are activated, allowing him to see his foe's movements despite their disguise. Water ninjutsu is what he calls it. The assassins have been revealed by this point, and they are immediately taken into custody. Itoki is questioned by the examiner about why he chose to utilize the fire alarm rather than directly tackle the hider. Itoki explains that his only goal was to keep everyone safe, thus he requested that they leave the location before to dealing with the enemy assassins. Itoki returns to his uncle's car knowing that he will have to run and hide like a coward because he was unable to contact his hider in the allocated time. He is later surprised to learn that he passed the test for the Kokuten Ninjutsu Academy, nevertheless. It turns out that the headmaster of the school was moved by Itoki's bravery and defended his choice by saying that the most important quality is that he has the heart of a ninja. Itoki bids his old school friends farewell and expresses his desire to stay in touch with them, although he is aware that this is improbable. Itoki is undoubtedly anxious as his first day at the Kokuten Ninja Academy finally arrives. He is sent off by Tokusada to a train station, where he boards the train with Kasetsu and arrives at the academy. Kasetsu seems to believe that making friends is pointless and immature, but Itoki really feels a little relieved that he made a buddy at Kokuten. Later on that day, he runs into another girl named Kiriai, who is shocked to learn that he is an IGA. 
If he wants to survive, she cautions them not to anger the Koga elite there. She takes Itoki to the cafeteria where she informs him that Koga receives much better meals than the other students. He continues to ogle several of the top pupils while they eat despite her warnings to stay away from them. One of them notices this and approaches the man. He learns from a female that a true ninja controls his emotions. When they finally meet, he warns him that the IJ clan will be dealt with because they were responsible for the murder of the Koga chief. Itoki remains up at night wondering what occurred because he hasn't heard of this before and believes that his family couldn't have committed such a dreadful deed. Kusetsu advises him to devote his attention on training rather than things that are out of his reach. They are issued ninja costumes and ninja cores on his first day. They prepare for today's exercise by donning their outfits. Before he consumes all of their provisions, they must try to collect a manju from the other teacher who is off in the distance. Everyone is at ease in their suits and ready to go as soon as they receive the green light. Kusetsu can even run from one tree to the next. Itoki, on the other hand, is unable to leave his current location. When the teacher sees that he is immobile, she informs him that if he doesn't get up from where he is, he would be expelled. Fortunately, Ryoko appears and aids Itoki. She explains that because these suits aren't custom-made, they typically need to be altered as she helps him become comfortable. She advises him to safeguard his ninja core at all costs because the suit won't function without it. Itoki is helped by Ryoko's explanation, but he ultimately collapses and dies. Realizing the full strength of these outfits, he notices that neither the suit nor himself are hurt. Kusetsu is on her way to the tower when Suzaku throws her off course. Suzaku is poised to kick Itoki down as he continues to try to get to the halfway point. Kusetsu, as always, intervenes to save our vain hero. Itoki moves on despite noticing a girl lying on the ground with a broken core. On the field, some of the Koga elite have been smashing people's cores and stealing their manju. Despite trailing far behind, he manages to locate some Koga clan members and makes the decision to fight them in an effort to recover the manju. The principal steps in before things get out of control and he manages to take the manju from the others while being beaten senselessly. A ninja has both a heart and a sword, and if he lacks either of them, he will never be a ninja, the principal says Itoki. The principal is really impressed with him despite the fact that he consumes the last manju and fails the task. The first inquiry turned up just one clue, so investigators are still looking for the Koga chief's killers. The wounds from the IGA ninja sword are evident on his body. Hayato, the leader of the first division at the NSC headquarters, informs his soldiers that Tokusada Kaga would be looked into because he is a skilled ninja and is well known for the urban legends that surround him. Shiwan, a newcomer, is charged with keeping up with Kaga going forward after arriving late for the meeting. Itoki learns about the approaching ninja tool exam at the Kokuten Ninja Academy and receives a ton of books to understand the theoretical parts of being a ninja. But one of his buddies warns him that instead of using his ninja skills to get the answers, he is wasting his time by being a nerd. She reveals that the test is intended to determine whether a student can take the answer key from the teacher as opposed to merely studying the books ineffectively. Shirwan tries to pursue Itoki's uncle in the meantime, but he outsmarts her and puts her in an awkward predicament. Meanwhile, a few of the Koga pupils are plotting to sabotage Itoki's schemes by getting him into difficulty before he can get the answers. Itoki and his friends devise a scheme to rob their teacher of the answer key throughout the night. While Itoki travels with some of them to the teacher's room, they position themselves around the academy to make sure they are not discovered. They attempt to deploy a drone to spy on the teacher as she works, and the drone is successful in locating the location of the safe's key, which opens the safe and releases the answer key. But the drone bangs on the door as it is moving back to Itoki. They all try to flee by running above the building while carrying Itoki so the instructor won't notice. Kiriya uses a smoke bomb to make the teacher flee the room since the teacher is still suspicious. Rushing inside, Itoki and his pals make an effort to locate the safe's key. However, they discover that the teacher stole the key before leaving. The Koga elites start to arrive at the same moment and assault a member of Itoki's team. When Kasetsu learns of this, she immediately leaves her buddy to figure out how to unlock the safe and hurries downstairs. Riwoka takes out a brand new lock-breaking device that she believes would work. There shouldn't be a problem since the academy has approved this instrument. They are eventually able to open the safe and get the questions out because Itoki trusts her. While Kiriai avoids the teacher, Kasetsu drives the Koga elite back. The group is confident the following day, but it soon becomes clear that the test they are given is entirely different from the one that was on the provided answer key. Everyone fails the test, with the exception of Ryuko, who handily succeeds because she, quote, knew everything on the test, because her village is an authority on the subject. However, Kasetsu covertly converses with Itoki and informs him that she thinks one of them is a traitor. The teacher was guarding the key to her safe when she fled, Therefore there is no way that she would have changed the answer key covertly. 
As the only other person who touched the paper and understood how to open the safe, Kasetsu reasoned that someone employed by Koga must have switched the answer key. She thinks Koga to be the culprit. She was the sole person to pass the test as well. Thank you all for watching. If you want a part 2 of this series, leave a comment, like and subscribe. See you all soon!